In the year 2150, virtual reality had become the norm, and people spent most of their waking hours in immersive digital worlds. Jack was no exception. He spent all his time in the VR, building incredible structures, exploring new realms, and battling fierce enemies. But something strange began to happen to Jack. He started to lose touch with reality. When he was jacked in, he couldn't tell the difference between the virtual and the real. He would often find himself talking to NPCs, mistaking them for real people. His friends and family became increasingly concerned about his addiction to VR, but Jack refused to listen to their warnings. He was convinced that the virtual world was more real than the physical one. He became so lost in his digital world that he stopped going to work and neglected his basic needs like eating and sleeping. One day, while Jack was exploring a new VR world, he stumbled upon a glitch in the system. He found himself transported to a strange place that looked like a mixture of reality and virtuality. He was surrounded by people who looked like avatars, but they were walking and talking like real humans. Jack was confused and disoriented. He couldn't tell if he was still in the VR or if he had somehow entered the real world. The people around him tried to talk to him but he couldn't understand what they were saying. He was so used to the digital language of the VR that the real words sounded like gibberish to him. After a few minutes, Jack realized that he was indeed in the real world. He was shocked to see how different it was from what he had imagined. The buildings were taller, the colors were brighter, and the people looked more real than any NPC he had ever encountered. Jack began to feel a sense of panic. He realized that he had been so lost in the VR that he had forgotten how to interact with the real world. He didn't know how to communicate, how to move, or how to react to the sensory overload. As he walked through the streets, he saw people staring at him with a mixture of curiosity and fear. They could sense that he was not like them, that he was somehow disconnected from reality. Jack felt like an alien in his own world. He wandered aimlessly for hours, trying to make sense of his surroundings. But the more he looked around, the more confused he became. He couldn't tell if what he was seeing was real or if it was just a simulation. Eventually, Jack collapsed on the sidewalk, exhausted and overwhelmed. He realized that he had lost touch with the real world because he had been so focused on the virtual one. He had forgotten what it meant to be human, to experience real emotions, to connect with other people. As he lay there, he made a decision. He would never again lose himself in the VR. He would use it as a tool, a way to explore new worlds and ideas, but he would never forget the importance of the real world. Jack got up, dusted himself off, and began to walk back home. He knew that it would be a long and difficult journey, but he was ready to face the challenges ahead. He had rediscovered his humanity, and that was all that mattered. Jack returned home, feeling a mix of relief and apprehension. He knew that he had to face the consequences of his actions, and he was not sure how his friends and family would react to his sudden change of heart. As he entered his apartment, he saw that his virtual reality equipment was still plugged in waiting for him to log in. But he ignored it and went to the kitchen, where he made himself a sandwich and a cup of coffee. He savored the taste of the food and the warmth of the drink, relishing the feeling of being alive in the real world. After he finished his meal, he sat down on his couch and looked around his apartment. 
He noticed how different everything looked now that he was no longer lost in the VR. The colors were more muted, the textures were more subtle, and the sounds were more varied. He felt like he was seeing his home for the first time. Suddenly, he heard a knock on the door. He got up and opened it, revealing his friend Sarah. She looked worried and relieved at the same time. Jack, where have you been? She asked. We've been trying to reach you for days. I've been lost, Jack replied, unsure of how to explain his experience. But I'm back now, and I'm sorry for worrying you. Sarah hugged him tightly, and Jack felt a surge of emotion. He had forgotten how good it felt to be touched by another human being. After Sarah left, Jack spent the next few days reconnecting with his friends and family. He went out for walks, had conversations, and even attended a party. He felt like he was rediscovering the world, one step at a time, but he also felt a sense of guilt. He knew that he had wasted so much time and energy on the virtual world, and he wondered if he could ever make up for it. One day, he decided to visit a nearby hospital, where he volunteered to help patients who were unable to leave their beds. He talked to them, listened to their stories, and tried to make them smile. He found that helping others gave him a sense of purpose that he had never experienced before. As he left the hospital, he saw a group of children playing in a nearby park. They were laughing, running, and shouting, their faces lit up with joy. Jack realized that he had missed out on so many real-life experiences because he had been lost in the VR. But he also knew that it was not too late to make up for it. From that day on, Jack dedicated his life to helping others and experiencing the real world. He still used the virtual reality equipment from time to time, but he did it with a newfound sense of perspective. He knew that the virtual world was just a tool, a way to enhance his real-world experiences, not a substitute for them. And whenever he felt lost or disconnected, he reminded himself of the children in the park, the patients in the hospital, and the friends and family who had stood by him. He knew that he was not alone that he was part of a larger community of human beings who shared his struggles and his triumphs. Jack had finally found his way back to reality, and he knew that he would never lose it again. Years went by, and Jack continued to live a fulfilling life in the real world. He had found love, built a career, and made many friends along the way. But he never forgot the lessons he had learned from his virtual reality experience. One day, he received a message from an old friend who had been struggling with addiction to VR. The friend told him that he had read about Jack's story and wanted to know how he had managed to overcome his addiction. Jack replied with a simple message. The real world is worth it. Keep fighting. He knew that the journey to recovery was not easy, and that everyone's path was different. But he also knew that it was possible to find one's way back to reality, no matter how lost one felt. The message that Jack had learned from his experience was that technology, no matter how advanced, could never replace the richness and complexity of real life. It could enhance it, augment it, and even transform it, but it could never replace it. The real world was messy, unpredictable, and sometimes painful, but it was also beautiful, meaningful, and full of possibilities. And the only way to fully experience it was to be present in the moment, to embrace it with all its imperfections and to live it with all one's heart.